so now we're in the dino. And I've always been told that green means go. So here we go. Big boar shootout. We're gonna start with 124s and 128s with a stock Harley head configuration with different intake manifolds, different exhaust systems, paired with some of our favorite cams. There's a lot more on the market. This is a baseline for you guys and kind of where we're at with a year of knowledge running different combinations on 124 and 128 setups. And the reason we're using the 124 and 128 is for cylinder wall thickness. We haven't gone to a 131 yet because it's a thinner cylinder wall and it, it's just not as strong. Most of the customers when they call, Aaron's on the phone with them, I'm on the phone with them. They're like, I want a big motor, I want to be able to go wherever I want, and I want reliability. And that's what we put together in our packages. The 131 is a little thinner cylinder wall. It's supposed to be a, a harder metal, a stronger metal, but our testing shows that these are holding up better than that setup, especially with the horsepower we're making. Yeah, not from a standpoint of like the side of the thing blowing out or anything like that. What we're talking about is its ability to maintain straightness, concentricity of the bore, all of those things. You have not only great horsepower in a motor, but long life in a motor that's making that kind of power. So what we're gonna go over first is we're gonna go over a 128. Almost all of the, the lines you're gonna see on the graph have the same exhaust. There are two different exhausts in there and we're gonna switch out the cam or some of them have a 55 millimeter manifold with a stock throttle body, and some of them have the stock manifold with stock throttle body. So the first one we like to go over, we're gonna go over the smallest cam to the largest. The first one on the graph is the s 475 that we pair with a stock manifold. We also pair it now with the 55 millimeter manifold, and it's got the moonshine exhaust system on it. So on this graph, it is a dark blue line very good cam setup for the heavy bike. We run this a lot on what we call our highway sleeper. So our highway sleeper is a 124, 128, 475 heavy bike. So something with a tour pack, something has to be weighted down. It could be a road glide, it could be a street glide. Two up a lot. Two up a lot, 40, 50 pounds of luggage on the bike. You're traveling, backrest on it, luggage rack on it, loading it down and back roads, low RPM. You just want to roll on the throttle and have it everywhere on the curve. It just, it's happy everywhere. Well, it just off the line, that's a bike. You, you just let go of your clutch, it moves. You don't have to give it gas. You just let the clutch out, the bike jumps forward. It's there right away. You're not having to give it gas in traffic. You just let the clutch out in, let the clutch out and in. And this thing, because it's only a 475 lift, we're really not hurting the valve springs at all. And it's the only cam in this setup that still uses the stock valve springs in the head. Every other cam on this paper that you're gonna see or on the graph has a valve spring that is set up for a higher lift than the factory springs. Yeah. He's still spinning right now. It's been a long <laughs> week, buddy. You wanna talk about the 475 at all? I think you covered it. All right, covered. The next one we're gonna to go to is the 492, which is the Moonshine Horsepower Cam. So the 492 was something we wanted to come out that was a little bigger than a 475 and competed with some of these cams that were like a 520 or larger, which on this graph, we paired the 492 with the D&D Big Bore. It kind of jumps up like a 475. It fills the gap between a 475 and the 521. So on the graph, we have a little more out of the hole it's real strong in the mid-range. Yeah, look at how it picked up from like, what is that, 3,000 to like probably, it's covered up a little bit in this chart, but like 4,500. It's a nice little gain right there in the middle. So every run you see on this dyno chart that you're looking at has the 55 millimeter intake manifold paired with the stock throttle body that came with your bike from the factory. And we snuck yeah. up on that a little bit. It was like the fear in the beginning was that that bigger manifold was gonna make it suffer lower in the curve and we tried it and tried it and tried it again and it seemed to like it everywhere so now we're pretty much putting it on everything on that displacement range seems to be very happy the intake manifold makes a big difference and on most of these we have a couple graphs we'll go over in a little bit that mike's going to cover where we show you a graph with the stock intake manifold and then the 55 but right now what we've noticed is there might be some gaps in the market, what's available today 
compared to where we're going to be in a year, two years, three years. This data and what we have available from manufacturers right now is going to change next year. It's going to change the year after. We're probably five years away from being to the point where when we do tweaks, we pretty much know what they all do. And there's not going to be too many more things. But the first five years of having this motor out, just like it was when the twin cams were out, no different than any other motor, it's going to evolve. And as we learn more and as more configurations come out, everything's going to change from time. So as of right now, early 2020, these setups are rocking and rolling, but it will evolve as everything else evolves. Why don't you go over the next one, the 521. 521 cam is one of my favorites. That yeah. cam is a, a legit cam. It covers the whole area of the curve, great power on the bottom, awesome through the middle. And every response I get from somebody who rides that cam when we deliver one is it just keeps pulling. When I think it's done, it just keeps pulling. And we delivered one today to a customer and he was just grinning ear to ear. It just, every time I think it's done, there's more until he shuts it off. So it's really, really super sweet setup. Um, like I said, great horsepower, great torque. But, you know, looking at all the curves, they're all so similar. It's, that's what really amazes me about all of this is how ultimately similar these are with just little tiny changes between them you know, to kind of craft the power into where someone really is going to want it and use it. But the 521 to me is probably the most versatile cam that we've seen in these setups. Well, the cool thing about the 570 or the 521 cam compared to a 475 is if you want to come build this package now and later down the road, you want more gains. It's just yeah, not in the budget. Yeah, you can toss heads on the 521 and you're going to pick up. And we have some sheets we'll go over on the next cam shootout, which we'll have ported heads on it. But that cam we're gonna set up when someone wants the next step. So if you look on the graph, the 521 is, is you know, it's 435 at like 2300 RPMs, it's hitting 135 foot pounds of torque at 2300. Now the 475 hit that number at 1900, which is pretty much off idle, which is amazing for what it does. But that picks up right there and then what it does is it passes the 475 on horsepower at 3,300. At 3,300, that's where the 521 really shines over the 475 cam. And the same thing about the 492 we have. They almost mirror each other to the T. The only difference between the 492 and the 521 is you get a slight bump between 2,000 to about 2,500 on torque. Now, would you put heads on a 475? No. I wouldn't either, yeah. I, I wouldn't make that call at all. 521, yes. The next one up, 538, the, the cam, absolutely. Well, you're adding just, just heads alone in general. You know, you're talking 1300 to $2,000 for the head that you pick. Then you're gonna pair it to a different manifold or Usually throttle body. larger to, to leverage that head all the way. So if you're gonna spend that kind of money, you're not gonna leave in a 475. Right. You're gonna go to the next step, especially when the M8 cam, you're talking, they're, they're $280 to $350, depending on which cam you go with. You know, they're typically between three to $400. So if you spend three grand, spend the extra three to $400, get the cam that matches the head set up and get the benefits all the way around. Yeah. You're next. So we've also uh, run the 538. It's a brand new cam that uh, we partner with Fueling on. And it runs very similar to these cams because everything else is so similar in the graph. We're kind of pushing the heads in the same direction no matter what we are, and that the lift is not that, that much more. The duration isn't that much different. Where I think the 538 is gonna shine is in our next video, which is gonna be a lot of these cams and more cams, larger cams with heads added to the mix. So you're gonna see a lot of these horsepower numbers go up higher, and I think that's where the 538 is really going to start to stand out in the crowd. Yeah. I also wanted to throw in the comp, uh, comp cam because those guys are super cool partners to have, and they, uh, they're really knowledgeable. And as usual, you know, they have a, a nice top-end cam that it's a 472 lift, so it's actually the smallest cam in the group, but horsepower-wise, it's right up there with all the big dogs at 100, 132 on this one. 133 horsepower, made a little bit less torque, but I mean, it's 139 torque versus 142, who cares? Yeah. 
and you know they work with us on our cam so our 492 is also something from comp you have to yeah. get it from us comp cams uh worked with us we got the specs we wanted we massaged it with them and that's how we came out with the 492. the 492 is something we're going to see a little bit more um if we're never going to do heads, it's something we're going to use more on 124s than we are 128s. Right, and we kind of build it as a hybrid cam that would kind of make the same power on both those platforms. Well, that's how the 538 came out. We were running the 521, and we right. wanted a little more. We called Luke at Fueling, yeah. said, hey, we want something more in this 521. We like the 521. It's awesome. And we want something that'll run like a 521 with stock heads, but when you put heads on it, it shoots for the stars. Yeah, so the cam that you're seeing in this is the first 538 they released. We tested them, gave them dyno results, told them it's awesome. It's now available. So this, these graphs are soft tails because nobody gets any soft tail love. And we gave Monty some soft tail love. <laughs> well, I mean, in general, you know, just, well, there's just less soft tails going into this platform. For one, it's a lighter bike. So when you put this big power in such a light platform, I mean, you, you can definitely tell, like you said, I mean, it revved up super fast, Quick, you know, because you, you've got you, like probably 150, 200 pounds, pounds less, less yeah. than, a, than a touring bike on the soft tail. Uh, it, it instantly feels like you have 15 horse more, same motor, different bike. It feels like you have 15 horse more. So what we did with these, with these graphs in particular is these are both exactly the same setup, except the blue graph has a 55 millimeter intake manifold and the red graph has the stock intake manifold. So you can see the difference that the two manifolds make. Yeah, right at 3,250 RPMs, horsepower and take separate from the one with the stock intake manifold. Yeah. That, that's where this guy benefits it. And we're not losing, by having more air in the lower RPMs, we're not losing anything there too, right. which is, um, important because sometimes if you over um, do your intake setup, you will sacrifice the bottom. Right. So there, there is a happy medium there. If you go too much, you will lose the bottom numbers. And look at how that, it that's carried. That's a very common mistake. Look at how it carried the horsepower on the top and not only continued to carry it, but just flattened it. Right. Just arced it right out. Well, yeah, 4,700 RPMs. That, it was just the head was starving for air from the intake. And you can see it down there. It's working. There's a little blip and stuff on the dyno and it just smoothed it out completely. And with all of the results that we have, because we have these on touring bikes too, where we can, we, we pick these graphs for no particular reason other than they just had those numbers because we have a lot of data and we're working with HPI to come out with our own throttle body that's kind of a hybrid of a small high velocity intake manifold and a larger opening throttle body to carry the top end even more without losing any bottom end power. Because if you, in what a lot of people come and tell us is I want the maximum amount of horsepower. What I like to say to that is horsepower is not actually a real thing. It's a mathematical calculation and it doesn't even come into play until 5,250 RPMs. Because torque is, is, is yeah. going to... And we shut these bikes off at 57, 5,800 RPM yeah, usually. Yeah, because they stop making power yeah. you know, with, with the cans that we're using. So what you really want is you want as much torque as you can get right on the bottom end of these heavy bikes. Because even the soft tails, you, you, can't, you can't compare these V-twin engines to a cafe racing bike. Because it's not even the same type of animal. A cafe racing bike at 5,000 RPMs. It takes that many RPMs to get it to go off of the line. Yep. Where these, you're shifting. Plus, it's a 300-pound bike, 400-pound bike. Right. It's just a completely different setup. Something else on this dynograph I want to go over, besides the intake manifold, is this is a 521 cam. Same cam we ran in the dyno chart we showed you before on the touring models. The difference is it's not making the torque at 2,000 RPMs or 25 or 3,000 RPMs as a previous graph, same motor. The difference is on the soft tail, we're running shorter exhaust pipes. Right. We're running exhaust pipe that's ending out the axle, not going to the back of the bike. The merge collector is closer to the engine as well or the cylinder head. So 
same cam, but that's the difference the exhaust is making. So this setup right here on this graph at 2,500, 142 <laughs> and 125, that's a huge difference. I mean, these graphs, when, yeah, when you see them and they're laid apart, it doesn't look like there's much difference. But right there, that's huge. So you're talking 17 foot pounds of torque. But you can't really tell though, on a soft tail because of how much lighter the platform is and how much smaller the unit itself is. That's a good point. It still feels like you have that 142 on yeah. that bike because of the weight difference and they run extremely well. But then the pipe, you can see where they, they merge back together. So right at like 3,500 RPMs, once it hits that RPM, it doesn't matter being a little shorter there. Right, because then you're, you've got so much velocity and you've got the engine spooled up enough that you're basically it's just an air pump at that point. Yeah, it takes so, advantage of the decreased resistance, yeah. so it makes a little bit more power. At that point, you're you're at maximum efficiency, so you're just getting the air in and out as fast as possible, and you don't really need that that back pressure, as people like to call it, of the the length of the pipe. Well, to at, hold it in. After testing about ten different exhaust systems on that same motor, same platform, soft tail, shorter there's a couple pipes we like. This is the Thrash and AR pipe we talk about. It. It's more money than everyone else's. It has the anti-reversion chambers on there and it definitely helps in the lower RPM. Yeah, in its yeah. class, it's the best one that we've seen yeah. by far. Yeah, for a short pipe. Yeah. What you don't want is you don't want this blue curve on an Ultra. No, you did something wrong if that's on a touring yeah. bike. If you've sure. got a, and, and we have one of those coming up. Well, there, there's a couple other pipes out there that market themselves well, that have shorter pipes that are very, very popular. And the, the merge isn't the same, no anti-reversion chambers. And this dip, just double it. Just double the dip is what you're oh, gonna yeah. see with those other pipes out there on the market. So when well, customers yeah. call us, that's, that's why we're pushing that pipe so hard. It is more, but it's very beneficial to have it. And that muffler also has a unique um, baffle system in it that we haven't had on any other exhaust system out there yet that we use dog balls the dog balls and the dog balls are a little quieter at idle um it's still real throaty when you're getting on it running around but it, it's not deafening you you know when you're sitting there idling in these it is taking way longer than i thought can you pass that moonshine over here there you go buddy i suck at pouring yeah, now that what you're touring bike that you saw uh, the exhaust system that we had on that bike was a, a packaging issue. We had a bike with a super long stretch fender. We tried to fit a D and D pipe on that. It did not work. We just couldn't fit it on this set of stretch bags that were on the bike. So we ended up going with what the customer had on it originally. And it was interesting to see what it did. He walked away smiling and it was more than he had ever, you know, more power than he'd ever felt in a bike before. Nice. But that's what you're about to see. Don't, Hold it against us. It wasn't our fault. So the short side dump pipe is the is the line in blue. It started out well. It has really good bottom end, but right where all your power is from 3,000 to 4,500 RPMs, it dies. And if you look at the, the graph, 132 foot-pounds of torque versus 145. And the other two graphs are a D&D a D&D &D big bore and a one of our moonshine exhaust systems and all three of all these graphs are 124s with 475 cams. So the whole system is identical except for the different exhausts and you can just see where it, it changes by the exhaust. So here's another another uh, exhaust example. Again, same cam, same engine. Now this was interesting because we have one, the blue graph is one set of exhaust with a 55 millimeter. The other graph is a different exhaust with a 60, uh, 62 millimeter HPI uh, throttle body and, and uh, manifold. You would think that the 62 millimeter would perform better, but the exhaust just wasn't adequate for what we were trying to do. So it, it doesn't matter how big of a, uh, how much air you try to push in if you can't get the air out. How much of that do you think is a combination, though, of maybe a little bit too much throttle body and manifold, maybe a little bit soft of pipe, and I so that's why you're seeing that in the bottom. I don't think that comes into play at all because normally, if you have normally if you have too much intake, you will have really good top end. 
because that's really where it shines. Yeah, like, and it didn't. Like when you look at like like straight pipes, look at think of drag racing. Drag 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 cars have like three inch exhaust pipes and they're this long. Because they don't give a shit, they're going 9,000 RPMs. Right, and you're shifting in with a yeah. very narrow range of RPM. But if you if you can't get the exhaust out, it doesn't matter how much air you try to push in. Right. You have to be able to get the, ex the expelled exhaust out. Well, this too, there's two changes here. We don't like to show two changes at one time because we can't tell you exactly which one did what. But this exhaust is definitely pulling this down. Now for the 62 millimeter throttle body, this graph could look different and have a little bit more horsepower mid-range with that throttle body with, a different, with the same exhaust the blue one has. So the red line, I would say, is mostly that exhaust system. A little yeah. bit the, the 62 on the bottom, but this blue line would look different with the 62 on it. I think anything from 35 up with the 62 might have benefited on the blue line. So we don't typically like to show two changes at once because you can't identify which one's doing the change. Yeah. Yeah. We also threw in a map that uh, I actually tuned this today. Uh, this is a 128 with a with a 521 D and D. You know, another person that that has uh, drank the Kool Aid, I guess you could say. And he had a Thunder Max ECM and was very skeptical about being able to tune that. And I dyno tuned it, and you can see it's the ex the results. The ECM, if it's tuned correctly, doesn't really change because uh, I have I can't tell you how many people are like well what about a comparison of different tuners real tuners like power vision TTS a thunder max you're going to get the same results because they have the same amount of tunability the piggyback systems and the cheap little we've got canned maps that you can run from your phone those are not real tuners yeah you, the you, you cannot tune your motorcycle from your phone the only tuners we're gonna mess with are the three mentioned TTS the Thunder Max and the Power Vision. That's yeah. all we're gonna to touch. We're never gonna compare something else. And the reason we do those three, those three are limitless. And I also include, put, included one map of a 2020 CVO 128 with a 475 cam, 55 millimeter intake and a moonshine exhaust, just to show you that RDRS is not a big deal. Well, RDRS isn't a big deal for us to tune. Some other guys are gonna tell you <laughs> we're good they can't tune it and cut boom, boom, but boom. it has to be addressed the rideability issues when you're trying to like really hard launch a bike with rdrs it's there well, if I mean, that's how you're going to use the bike i would recommend getting a bike without rdrs and there's some of our videos you can see we have a cvo limited in that sand dune color with the chrome works mufflers on it you can see Aaron take off with that bike, and then it sounds like he gets out of the throttle, then back into it. And that's on our Sounds of Power series. It's the CVO in Sand Dune with the Chromeworks system on it. So watch that, and you can, after knowing what we just said, you'll pick it up. Yeah, we didn't go over anything of 538 lift or beyond, because what it does is you sacrifice a lot of torque on the bottom. But if we pair it with the right head, it picks up on the bottom some. Not as much as these guys on, but they do come on strong. So when we go to the video with ported heads, you're gonna see a 521, a 538, 550s, and beyond. You know, there's not too many more beyond that, but we will have some depending on the motor um, combination we're doing. Right. So the balancer is right here. Yep. And this guy is swinging your motor. It's counteracting the weight from the other side. This is making your motor smooth at idle. It's not really making it smoother at operating RPMs. The twin cam got smooth at, RP, at operating RPMs. This is really working the best when it's at idle. This guy on the highway is beneficial. If you're always on the highway running, this actually helps you maintain RPMs and maintain mile an hour. If you're going from stop to stop real fast, you might want to take this out. We build them both ways. It is an option. For most of these motors you're looking at, they're not in there. That's the budget build. When we have to take this out, it gets more expensive. You're, you're talking um, removing the whole lower end from the chassis so we can do this. And when we're doing this, we're also doing some strengthening of the stock flywheel. Yep. Well, what the, the big difference that the motor sees without this in it is we don't have the graph here, but I'll show it overhead. This is a similar build, one with a balanced flywheel 
and one with the counterbalancer removed. And this graph is actually over time. So you can set up a dyno graph instead of being over R RPM and engine speed, you can set it over time. And if you notice without the counterbalancer in to go from idle to redline, it happens faster. It doesn't necessarily make more power, but the motor is able to spin quicker. So if you wanna to get to your maximum torque in the maximum amount of time, taking the counterbalancer out, taking some of these other lightning, uh, the, the uh, engine lightning measures that we do, that's where it really comes into play is the amount of time, as you can see in this graph. And you can hear it. If you go to anybody, anybody that watches our YouTube channel, go check out the white lowrider that I was riding for the, you know, the sound tests and everything that we shot. You can hear audibly how much quicker that bike accelerates. I mean, I wasn't even trying to light the tire on that bike. It lit the tire and took off and it got up through the RPMs like way faster than any of those other bikes. And that was the only one that we rode in that series of videos that had a decounterbalance flywheel. Something else I enjoy about taking the counterbalancer out is uh, we're in Tennessee. We have a lot of twisty roads. We're coming off a straight into a twisty, back on a straight, back into a twisty. So taking the balancer out, when you go to decel, like the motor spins up faster, it revs down harder. So your engine braking is increased with removing this, and that's the part that I like the best. So. Um, my motors, I'm taking this guy out just so when I'm coming to the corner, the engine braking, it's just, you know, when you come in, it's bah, 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 yeah, like instead of, into the corner. you know, nice and slow. Bah, 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 bah. It's a big difference. And if you came off a twin cam and went to the M8, that was probably one of the biggest things you noticed when they were stock. Something else we need to go over is when we do these big 128s, a question that arises a lot is, oh my God, my fuel mileage, fuel mileage. Well, what we've noticed is on some of these builds, you have a stock M8 from the factory, and then you have one of our built motors tuned for runability, tuned for RPM. I mean, that's something you spend a lot of time going over in the dyno. I'll stop with my motor. It's producing 135 horsepower. Someone will stop, stop with a bike that has an intake and a pipe on the thing, and I'll take less gas than he does because we were just running 80 on the highway for four hours. What we've noticed is running 80 on the highway, 70 to 90 on the highway roughly, every hour you're on the highway with one of these training bikes from Harley is, an, is a quarter tank of fuel. So one hour, two hour, three, four, you're out. You're out of right. fuel, it doesn't matter. He's running a 128, you're on a 114. We pull over, get gas. What's funny is you might take a little more one time, he might take a little more, but they're so close. It's not like you build one of these, you're riding of your buddies across the country all the time, and oh, Aaron's with us, we gotta stop, we gotta pull over early for, and that's not the case. You're, you're not gonna run into that with our setups. Right. And I ride. yeah, let's go, no one. I guarantee you someone's gonna say, I gotta use the restroom, my butt hurts, this is going on, my legs cramp. They're pulling over for some other reason. My pipe besides is too loud. Being, yeah, besides, running out of fuel. <laughs> I, I get I, um, asked that question all the time on the phone, like what's it gonna do to my mileage? And my response to people on the phone 90% of the time is your mileage isn't gonna change that much. Yes, you're increasing displacement, but the tune these guys are putting in the bike um, at part throttle is not wasting fuel. It's very efficient. It's really close, you know, close to stoic. Um, so it's not using a whole bunch of fuel. Um, what generally happens is guys that have that kind of power tend to twist the throttle more and yeah you're going to use more power when you're enjoying that horsepower so don't come to me later and say man i can't get any mileage out of my bike well yeah because you're romping on it you know racing your buddies all the time and you're blowing fuel well one of our one of our good uh friends and customers christian he did a 128 and going around town he said he gets in the mid 30s but he's always hammering it yeah. in fact i think uh i think the hog chapter is about to kick him out because <laughs> <laughs> it's just too much i think you're tired of too him much. Showboating, but he rode down to daytona and back and said that all the way there he got between 40 and 47 miles of the gallon yeah which is the same as factory yep. it didn't make any difference when he was when he wasn't hammering it but you know if you're going to be twisting the throttle and really getting into it it's going to use fuel because it has to i mean there's, it needs more fuel to make the power that it's that it's putting out. Absolutely. So when you're in town playing with your buddies, you're going to run out of fuel quicker. When you're hammering on it, where you're losing that fuel is going from zero 
to max over and over and over. That's when it's really eating. Maintaining mile an hour, right. the difference of a 114 trying to do 80, it's working. It's working a little harder. Your 128 maintaining 80, the thing's laughing at 80. Especially like, you know, a 475 to a, uh, or to a 538. So a 475 to a 538, these things on the highway running that RPM, because you're around 3,000 RPMs, mm -hmm. you're, you're right in there. That's where these things are making torque. So when we look at this graph, these things are making that torque. I mean, it's pretty consistent. And this curve is awesome to have. It's nice, these M8s have a nice flat curve. And that's why we chose these camps. Yeah. That's it. Paper. That is it. <laughs> you don't have this one? I don't even know what that is. The elephant yeah, in the I room. Like the we elephant in the room. Let's go over it. So we get a lot of calls on the Harley 131. We do these setups. We hang up on them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we carefully, slowly convince them that it's in their best interest to build one of our 128. Well, actually, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not. I don't know why more people haven't gone with it. I mean, it's easy. It's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. People are you're greedy for horsepower. Well, no, it's not that. It's this system is is good if you're not trying to pick the right cams and doing the testing that we did to get to this point. They need to do this. What did Tommy Boy say? You could I could stick my hand in a bull's ass, but <laughs> but what? I don't remember the rest. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, anyways, the Harley 131. Um, what it's making? You're making right around 130 foot pounds of torque and it's going to make 120 horsepower. There's a variance. You Ish. can lose four yeah. or five, you can gain four or five. But the torque, it takes it 4,200 RPMs, which you'll see up there, 4,200 RPMs to make 130. We're making 130 or more at 1,900 RPMs, which is here. And we spend a lot of time picking out the right components to do it, and you'll feel it riding the bike. A lot more responsive. This system, warranty from Harley, no problem, any shop. You can go to any shop in the country, they can install this system with their package, get these results, and you don't have to worry about them picking the wrong cam, the wrong throttle body, the wrong head. It's there, it's a guaranteed package, and Harley stands behind it, which is what most people want. Yeah. And this is a really good setup. Now, will our setup beat it? If you're racing, absolutely. Does everyone need that? No, but if that's you, we want you to call us and we want you to be able to have the setup or we want to be able to ship you the parts, you put it together, us help you out. That's what we're here for. If, or if you want, I'll just hang up on you. It, I mean, I, I, I aim to please. Well, Some people like that. They're like, I want a 131. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's why me and Aaron answered most of the yeah. phones. We got to walk you through it. A couple guys that wanted the 131s did the 128s. We gave them, went home. Their buddy put the 131 in. They didn't tell them they got our 128, and uh, they were glad they called us. Yeah. Super glad they called us. So if your buddy did the 131, give us a call. Don't tell them what you're doing. We'll get you set up. Ask for MVO. <laughs> <laughs>